why is it that keyboards are seen on equal footing with pianos, grand pianos, upright pianos, and yet electronic drums are not seen on equal footing with acoustic drums? How come keyboards have gone mainstream and electronic drums are just seen as glorified practice tools? Today I'm gonna to talk about what the electronic drum industry can learn from the keyboard industry, and that's coming up. What's up guys, Justin Greenwald here. Welcome to 65 Drums. This is the place to keep on top of all things e-drum related. So subscribe if you haven't already. Today I'm talking about what the electronic drum industry can learn from the keyboard industry because they are very, very similar to each other. They've both fought the same battle, keyboards won, and electronic drums are still struggling to become accepted as mainstream. You've got keyboards where every major band in the entire world is using a keyboard. You know, some of them use grand pianos for the looks and all that. Sometimes it'll look like they're using an upright piano, but it's actually basically a fancy wooden cabinet for a keyboard. And then you've got electronic drums, which are seen as glorified practice instruments. Of course, there are plenty of professionals that use electronic drums, and they are getting better and better. Electronic drums, this has never been as good of a time to get into electronic drums as it is today. I love electronic drums. I've played with them live, I record with them, I practice with them, they're great. But the e-drum industry is suffering in a lot of ways that they don't need to be. So here are a couple of things keyboards are doing right that electronic drums still, for some odd reason, struggle to do. So the first thing is keyboards have the exact same size playing surface as their acoustic equivalent. Imagine if you went to a music store and you talked to the salesman and said, I want to buy a keyboard. And then he said, okay, what's your budget? And you say, I've got $700. And he takes you over to the section with tiny, tiny little pianos. And they're only this long and the keys are like that wide. And then he says, here you go. This is the best I got for 700 bucks. It's got great reviews, best sound in class, blah, blah, blah. And then you say, but it's, tiny don't you have anything bigger and he's like well that costs more and then you tell him well don't worry I'll, I've got a little bit more money uh, show me something that has the exact same playing surface size as you know a regular upright piano and then he takes you over to all the other keyboards that cost three thousand four thousand five thousand six thousand dollars and he says here you go the higher end stuff costs money I know but it'll be worth it if you save up the money and buy it how come the low end stuff is tiny and the high end stuff is just regular sized that's the question we need to ask when we're buying electronic drum sets when you've got 500 bucks to buy an electronic drum set and then the salesman brings you over to the e-drum section and then points at a Roland TD 1k nothing against people that own $500 electronic drum sets I, it's just what's available for the price and he points at the TD 1k and says here you go and the pads are all like this big and if you're used to playing acoustic drums and your floor tom used to be this big and now it's a tiny little rubber pad it just doesn't make any sense and it's not because of the cost I know some of you guys are thinking this you're like Justin you don't understand keyboards are really cheap to make and that's why you can have a full-size keyboard at you know 600 bucks that's weighted and has 88 keys you don't understand drums are huge have you ever seen an acoustic drum set Justin they're huge and they t they they weigh a lot and that's why they cost so much to manufacture electronic drums can't afford to have dr big drum shells and I gotta call BS on that reason. If you go look at a drum company like Sound Percussion, they make acoustic drums, they have a full-sized acoustic drum set for $400. That means when they manufacture the drum set, it cost Sound Percussion maybe 150 bucks to, to build an entire full-size acoustic drum set. It's only 150 bucks, which means that even the lowest end electronic drum sets should at least be a little bit bigger. There's no real reason why e-drum manufacturers are making drums that small. It's just because they've chosen to make tiny little electronic drum sets. Drummers that are coming from acoustic, they're trying to buy an electronic drum set, get into the e-drum market because of the, the awesome flexibility, the lower volume, and they go to the store and they see all these tiny little electronic drum sets at exorbitant prices. So this is something that keyboards are doing right. If you've got like five to eight hundred dollars you can get a full-sized playing surface as if you were playing a baby grand okay electronic drums are just 
really, really tiny. And I'm not trying to rant about electronic drums here. I'm just trying to point some things out. I know it seems like I'm complaining in this video, but someone has to point these things out because if no one ever questions anything, nothing will ever change. So what's the next thing keyboards do right? Keyboards have figured it out a lot quicker than electronic drums. And if you go higher end, the sound on keyboards is just amazing. And they have so many sounds and they aren't filler sounds. A lot of the sounds inside of pianos are really, really good and you can use quite a few of them. Uh, electronic drum modules come with a lot of filler kits. You'll have maybe, maybe four really good kits. And then the rest of them are all acoustic kits that don't sound very good and then a bunch of like world percussion kits that no one ever uses and then a bunch of electronic sounds that are just a little bit dated and there's no reason why electronic drums can't sound better there really is no reason especially if you're buying like a mid-range electronic drum set you're you're buying like a, a one thousand dollar electronic drum set a fifteen hundred dollar electronic drum set the sounds should be better than what those big companies are giving us all they have to do is do a licensing agreement with like TuneTrack, get a copy of Easy Drummer. What's Easy Drummer right now? It's like, what, 100, 150 bucks? They can do a deal with Easy Drummer where Easy Drummer gives them the licensing. They pay Easy Drummer $50 every time they sell a drum module, and bam, all of a sudden you've got a TD whatever, a TD-11 that has a copy of Easy Drummer built into it. Really nice sounds. Roland can kick back. They don't have to spend all that time in R&D because they just do a nice licensing agreement with a VST company. This is what Pearl has done with their new Mimic drum module. They did a licensing agreement with a company called Steven Slate Drums. Steven Slate Drums not only gave them a copy of Steven Slate Drums, they co-developed the drum module with them and created a whole new version of the drum software. Of course, that is a high-end drum module, and it's really incredibly high-priced. But still, the, the thing can apply. Like Yamaha could do a deal with Addictive Drums and get a copy of Addictive Drums on all of their drum modules. It wouldn't cost that much. The technology is there. Now, you'd have to beef up the drum module, though. Electronic drum companies seem to not want to put a lot of horsepower inside of their drum modules. You know what? Electronic drums don't have an excuse. It's 2017. The sound capability is there just electronic drum companies need to step up their game and they have been by the way i need to give i need to be a little bit of positive right here because electronic drum modules are better than they've ever sounded i know that happens every other year but still i gotta say this some of the greatest sound modules i've ever heard have been coming out lately the cat percussion kt4 drum module i really like that drum module the td50 sounds really good it's not an enormous leap over the td30 but it is a move forward the mimic drum module will be the best from the sound demos we've heard the lisa strike module is a really nice step in the right direction so e-drum companies are making moves forward in this regard but still there's no excuse keyboards sounded really good long before electronic drums did and that's one thing keyboards do right now let's go to the next point keyboards embrace a lot of different sounds you don't buy a keyboard just to emulate a grand piano. People didn't suddenly start using keyboards because they wanted to have a quiet version of a piano. People started using keyboards because you got really unique sounds out of them. They have a wide array of sounds and they embrace a lot of very new sounds. I'm talking about synthesizer sounds. When you buy a brand new keyboard that was just unveiled at NAMM or whatever, it's gonna have some really cool sounding like dance synthesizer EDM you know dubstep there's gonna be a lot of interesting sounds inside of that keyboard if you buy that particular kind of keyboard there's lots of different kinds of keyboards if you buy a brand new electronic drum set they neglect the whole dance drum sound thing altogether electronic drums need to differentiate themselves from acoustic drums there has to be another reason to to buy an electronic drum set other than just someone saying, oh, it's a lot quieter and it's easier to record. There's gotta be another reason. And there's no reason why electronic drums shouldn't have the best sound library of EDM, dubstep, like really cool dance type drum sounds. I know a lot of people think that they're just two dimensional and they don't really add anything and it's all fluff. But if companies really spend some time trying to design some really cool dance drum sounds, it could be a big reason to buy an electronic drum set. You know, even like with the Roland TD30, which I have, it's a previous Roland flagship, and it has some nice dance kits inside of it, and I've developed one that I like a lot from the internal sounds. But you know what, when you buy a synthesizer, you're getting incredible sounds that you're hearing on records playing today on the radio. Meanwhile, when you buy an electronic drum module and you go over to the dance drum sounds, you're hearing like really old dance drum sounds, like 808, 
909, a bunch of other crummy 90s dance sounds. They're all for novelty. They just don't put a lot of thought into having really deep sounding dance drum sounds. I know a lot of people will disagree with me on this, but it's a differentiator between acoustic drums and electronic drums. And you should be able to layer those as well. A lot of bands are using acoustic drum sounds and they're layering like a really cool um, dance kick drum sound over top of that or a dance snare sound. Layering those two different styles of drum sounds over top of each other is very powerful. And a lot of drum modules just aren't capable of layering sounds. And that's a huge liability if you want people buying your electronic drum set. But in summary, keyboards always seem to have the fresh sound you know drum sets don't seem to have the current stuff and that's a problem and then of course the last point is overall price I've talked about price in this way and that way but this is like an overall broad thing where you can't buy a really decent electronic drum set that sounds great has large playing surface until you shell out you know fifteen hundred dollars seventeen hundred dollars that's when you start getting the combination of really good drum sounds and larger playing surfaces you don't get that till around seventeen hundred bucks meanwhile a keyboard you really can get a really nice keyboard that does a lot for a thousand bucks like you really can find it and a bunch of different companies are competing with each other to do this that's another thing I need to point out. There seems to be a lot more competition in the keyboard industry. There aren't a ton of electronic drum companies. There are a lot of little mini one-man shop type electronic drum companies that convert acoustic drums into electronic drums or specialize in making this one particular kind of pad. There's only a handful of big electronic drum companies. I gotta give Alesis a little bit of love because they are making a lot bigger electronic drum pads than most people on the market. And their previous attempts to do that, they suffered in quality because the cymbals had known issues where they just didn't last a long time. Roland had high quality cymbals, high quality sound, but really tiny pads, along with Yamaha. Yamaha was basically like Roland where they had high quality, but they're all really small pads at high prices. I love electronic drums. You guys know that because I have a whole show dedicated to electronic drums. I just do video after video about electronic drums. They sound a lot better than they ever have. You're getting better playing surfaces than you ever have. You've been able to transform your acoustic drum set into an electronic drum set easier than you ever have before. And there's a lot of things going for e-drums right now. They're so easy to record. The sound quality is getting better, especially if you hook up your laptop to a VST. There's a lot of things going for e-drums. But we gotta point out these other things that companies are kind of slacking on because if no one ever points any of it out, then the companies won't learn, they won't grow, they won't move past what they've been doing. The one thing that needs to change 100% needs to be the playing surface. Because we know there's a big linear progression where the sounds will get better forever and forever. You know, e-drum companies have nothing against making better sounding drum modules. They are just really slow about it, even though the technology has been there for a long time to make them sound better. But that's fine. The sounds are always gonna get better. However, e-drum companies have purposely made small drum sets for decades. They've done this on purpose. It's not because of cost. I've already proved that. You can make an entire acoustic drum set for like 200, 150 bucks. It's not because of the cost of actually physically manufacturing the drum set. It's because they've chosen to make small drums. And it's not because we want e-drums to be portable. Any company could easily make two lines of drum sets. One line of e-drums to be the standard size, one line of e-drums maybe a little bit cheaper to be the travel kit size. The size of the pads is a big issue. Like people asking me, Justin, I've got this much money, what should I buy? I've got like people from churches emailing me, like we've got this much in the budget for an electronic drum set, we need something that will keep the acoustic drummers happy because they don't want to switch over to e-drums. We need something that's acoustic drum sized, sounds really, really nice, and you know, looks are kind of a secondary issue. We've got a thousand bucks, what can you get us? And I gotta tell them, listen, you're not gonna get an acoustic sized electronic drum set at a thousand bucks. You should be able to buy a drum set the size of an acoustic drum set for a thousand bucks. You should be able to do that, but e-drum makers aren't doing that yet. And it's a big thing holding back electronic drums from getting to the place they should be at right now. They should be seen alongside acoustic drums as pretty much equal, just different. They should be seen as that by the majority of drummers, but they aren't yet. If the electronic drum companies would just do a handful of things, electronic drums would be seen in a much kinder light for the overall drummer. I hope you found this video interesting. I really do appreciate that you guys watched all the way to the end. If you're already subscribed, be sure to hit the bell icon so you don't miss the new videos. Also, check me out on Facebook. See you guys in a few.